Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We stand to our feet and we want to go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Does anybody have a prayer request? Traveling mercies for my sister Linda. She's going to Montreal on a Friday. Jesus name. Or for Carolyn's mom. My sister Carolyn's mom. Let's also pray for this Easter Sunday. All the churches in British Columbia. Honestly. Um, also, if we could uh, pray for Michael and Sarah, uh, that the Lord would uh, heal them if they're not feeling good or whatever the case may be. But uh, if he would just do his work. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for your goodness, for your power, God, for your truth, God, for your spirit. We're asking for your word, God, for your will to be accomplished. God, we pray for the Holy Ghost to touch, to strengthen you. We pray for your mercies, God, to touch you. Oh, God, we thank you for your spirit. God. We pray Lord, for you to touch us. We pray that you would heal the Lord. I pray, Father, for God, bring healing, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for God, we pray that your will will be accomplished, Lord. I know we are Touch this Easter Sunday, God. I pray that your hand would be upon God every aspect of our Sunday. God, reach down and bless and minister grace, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, we love you for it. We praise you for it, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, we love you, God. We love you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Anybody happy to be a child of the King? Amen. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm a child of the Flows through my veins, and I was wretched and poor, and I can sing. Praise God, praise God, I'm a child. Praise 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, we love you. God, we love you. Jesus, thank you for your touch. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God bless you for standing. Stay seated. Jesse come back into my life recently. I haven't seen him since 2018, and we've been talking for about a month and a half, and we haven't done a Bible study yet, but he wants to get baptized in Jesus' name a couple weekends from now. It's awesome. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. We want to turn our Bibles to Revelation chapter 9. Tonight. Revelation uh, chapter 9, and uh, we want to begin reading at verse number 13. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar which is before God, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Verse number 18 goes on, By these three was the third part of men killed by fire and by smoke and by brimstone which issued out of their mouths. Now just, you know, we can read through things like this and not really grasp what we just read. A third part of mankind is going to be killed here. And the rest, verse 20, <clears throat> of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of, their, of their, uh, the works of their hands which they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. So even though all of these plagues that we, uh, we can read about in the book of Revelation uh, is going to unfold, and, and it's going to unfold in plain view of everybody in the whole world. Uh, and even after this particular event of one-third of mankind being wiped out, people are so hardened and they still will not repent. Um, I want to ask a question. Does anybody here know what the classical seven deadly sins are? Mm, gluttony, sloth, um, murder... Murder is not one of them. No, lying. What's that? Lying. Uh, Deadly No, it's funny, but evidently not. Poison. What's Poison. That? I don't necessarily agree with the classical ones, uh, but th this is what they are. Seven deadly sins are anger, greed, sloth, pride, lust, envy, and gluttony. So tonight, we're not going to look at those seven deadly sins, but we want to look at the seven deadly sins of the end time. And we read uh, seven different categories of sins that these men uh, were guilty of. Um, now Jesus spoke of the end times in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 34. He said, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. So this is all going to come to pass in the span of one generation or perhaps one lifetime. Um, once these things really start to crank up, uh, which we are seeing, um, it's, it's not going to pass. So we, we, we're not talking about hundreds of years in the future. Here. This is something that, that is at hand. The Apostle Paul spoke uh, of the end times also. And, uh, and he wrote, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away, and... Uh, goes on to say that they are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. That is a, a very uh, succinct list of uh, sinful 
uh, in, uh, engagements that people are, are actively pursuing in the end time that we can see. We can just check each one of those things off and it's happening in our day. The Apostle Peter also wrote of the end times. He said in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 through 11, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought we to be in all holy manner of conversation and godliness? So, in our text, the Apostle John writes of the blatant ungodliness of the last days. And uh, this Bible study this evening uh, serves as a warning to us, especially uh, to be vigilant lest these sins could creep into our lives as, the, uh, as we are living in the last days. So we want to kind of go through these things. The first uh, sin that was mentioned here is devil worship. Devil worship. Uh, second, uh, rather, verse number 20 says, The rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of their works of their hands, that they should not worship devils. Worshiping devils. You know, there's, we're living in North America, and, and uh, a lot of people in North America don't believe in the spiritual realms. They don't believe in the supernatural, and they don't believe in the existence of devils. Uh, and yet, those very same people, many of them are actually worshipers of devils. They are devil worshipers, um, and they don't know it. So it's one of the things that's, uh, that's, that's typical of, of living where we are. Uh, in the end time, man is made to worship. All human cultures show a tendency to worship, whether it be God, the God, uh, or their own gods. So this was one of Satan's temptations to Jesus in the desert, remember? Uh, and again, the devil taketh him up to an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me, then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So if Satan is bold enough to, to tempt the creator of heaven and earth, Jesus Christ, to worship him and worship devils, um, certainly he will not hesitate to try and do that to humanity, to people, uh, to us. Um, Worshipping of devils. Now, our world today is filled with this particular sin. Uh, bodily, it's boldly seen in the occult practices, Satanists, churches, witchcraft, horoscopes, Ouija boards, and the like. Uh, there's so much devil worship going on in our day. Um, our world is filled also with a much more subtle form of demon worship. Uh, in Second First Timothy chapter four verse one, it says, "The Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, being seduced by by spirits, doctrines of devils." I wonder if any, if we could have a bit of a discussion on that. What is an example? Or maybe some examples of doctrines of devils. False, false biblical teaching. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, parading itself as being teaching yeah. from God, but it's really not. It's false. Yeah. Definitely, um, false doctrine in that sense. What else? What's another? Is there any more doctrines of devils out there? I can think of many. Well, anything that would exalt itself and impose and. Uh, like put itself up against the knowledge of God, yeah. right? So a doctrine of devil could you go all the way back to evolution, right? Is a doctrine of totally. devils um, probably uh, that you know the idea that you can morph that a gender is just a social construct, a doctrine of the devil. Yeah, I mean, there's we're abounding in doctrines of devils. They're all over the place. There's so many, and that's in a form uh, paying allegiance and worshiping demonic spirits when you give heed to that right mm -hmm. um and and we can see that if we in that context there's there's so much devil worship going on and think about and as we go through this too just the the patience of god what he sees every day all day long and he has for 
thousands of years and the world is still in existence, you know, like, uh, you know, but then we can also read in Revelation where the cup of the Lord's wrath is going to be filled up to the overflowing and that's, that's when the tribulation and that's when all of these things of Revelation will truly unfold is the wrath of God being poured out. Um, so that was the first one. And then the second one that was mentioned was I- idol worship. Uh, and verse number 20 goes on to, they worshiped idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. And, you know, when I think of this type of an idea about idols and people worshiping idols, there's another verse of scripture that talks about those people that worship these dumb idols are just like them. They are dumb in to think that, that in doing this. Like it's, it, uh, it's, not, it's a paraphrase kind of what, what, it was, uh, what that verse says, but it's, it's almost funny the way it's worded. But uh, it's like, why would you want to worship um, idols, you know? But what, what are some, what, what is an example of idol worship? What, what is it talking about here when it says worshiping uh, gods of silver and brass and stone and wood? Well, it's like, you know, in pagan, they have their Krishna, Buddha is sitting there all fat and jolly. And, you know, that would definitely be an idol, right? Um, you know, I, I think even uh, some Catholics probably get involved in idol worship because they actually... Like they have that whole cross and Jesus. Yeah, they have an object to yeah, to venerate, right? And people have to have those crosses. Right? And also, they make basically idols of saints, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where they, they they pray to Mary dead saints and, and whatnot. Like so definitely, that's that's some examples there. Um, but I think idol worship even goes beyond that. I think an idol is anything that we esteem higher than God. Right. Yeah. So an idol is placing it is placing worship and adoration and, and, and your energy and your focus more than God. So, I mean, if you, put, if you categorize an idol as something that is simply like that, money, money is definitely a big one. Technology. Money, technology, could be, um, it could be, uh, I mean, you fill in the blank, basically. It could be so many different things that people esteem higher than God. That becomes an idol. So, no wonder... Uh, it's, it's rampant in our day. Um, so this is the companion sin to the first sin. Demon worship and idolatry go hand in hand. And both, both sinful practices are widespread in the end times. It is all leading up to the ultimate idolatry, the worship of the image of the Antichrist beast in Revelation uh, chapter 13. Such idolatry incurs the fierce wrath of God. We must not ever forget that, that uh, it's even mentioned in the Ten Commandments, worshiping idols uh, and the for, forbidding of that. Uh, Revelation chapter 14, verse 11, it speaks of the, the wrath of God. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. So that's... That's the, uh, the lot and the eternal uh, significance of, 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 of what the, their existence is going to be for all eternity. Um, people who, who do not uh, disengage with idol worship and they just continue worshiping idols and worshiping devils. And there was a third uh, sin that was mentioned as well in verse number 21. It says, neither repented they of their murders. Murders. Now, Jesus called Satan a murderer, if you recall, uh, in John chapter 8 and verse 44. Adam and Eve's son, Cain, was a murderer. He was, a matter of fact, the first murderer amongst the human populace uh, in 1 John chapter 3, verse 12. And these days in which we live um, are a time of much murder. I mean, it's just... You know, what one scripture says that evil men shall be waxing worse and worse. And it seems like it's just crazy. And also it talks about people would be fierce. We read about that in First Peter. We just read that. Fierce. People are just, I mean, so 
evil and wicked uh, that, that they will just, you know, take people's lives. You know, you see it in the school shootings that's happening. You see it in terrorist attacks. You see it in, um, you know, it also says in the last days that there's going to be wars and rumors of wars because people are addicted to murder. People are addicted to killing uh, and, and whatnot. We're going to go there, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely murder. Homicides, yeah. And it sounds so beneficial, right? Like we have a good friend of ours. His mom um, had dementia really bad. And um, they put her down last year, for want of a better term. I hope they they she She decided when she was still in the right mind that she would pick a day, and they picked a day, and she... They put her, put her down. So that's legal here in Bridgeport. Oh, yeah, but they go yeah, through a lot to get to that. Um, they have to go through a they lot of psychiatrists and doctors. For sure. There was a long, long process. You know? It wasn't something that was decided one day and then what happened the next. No, there was a process involved, but nevertheless, the final outcome is the same. Yeah. Right? And I, like, I, that's not the only person that I know. Yeah. And, and it sounded like, to hear him talk, he, it sounds like full on compassion. How could you not? How could you let somebody suffer? Right? Um, you know, one of our clients, the same thing. She had um, some kind of cancer and it was terminal. And yeah, they had a big party for her. And then a couple days later, she checked her out. They checked her out. Yeah. Did you let me throw a suicide? Yes. Do you think the government actually is trying to come up with something to assist in the suicide program for people who just want to take their life? It's just oh yeah, because perfectly. when you when you you set the line here, they're going to go beyond the line. So now it's not just going to be people that are terminal with some terminal illness. It's going to be people that are mentally chronically Ill. depressed or mentally ill, or you know who knows what. And think about all the avenues for greedy relatives to take advantage of. Like there's going to be so much. Um, potential for abuse of, of, of a system like this. For, for, I mean, just the very fact that it's happening. But that's that's how, and that's only new law in the last, say, five years that that's come about. Okay. So it's another sign of the end, right? 100%. Homicides are to be witnessed every day uh, in, in t today, just. <laughs> Read the news, you know, it's everywhere. Matthew chapter 24, verses 6 through 7. Uh, you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Um, that's on a macro scale, actual nations and kingdoms, but also, you know, it boils down to human beings fighting and being pitting one, one against another as well. North America, close to 2 million lives annually are snuffed out. Uh, through abortion. Um, you can imagine, um, you know, just, just uh, and, and that's just an accepted, legally sanctioned, government sanctioned murder, is what it is, is murder, yeah. You mentioned nation shall rise against nation. I remember hearing preaching a while ago that said that, that the word nation there is actually ethnos, and it means ethnicity. And so even just, we see nations rising against it, like the culture wars between yeah. white and black and brown people and all of that is just the, like they're feeding it. They're feeding because it, it, yeah. it, it, it brings political discord is a way for the enemy to get footballs, right? Yeah, totally. Um, so in the church, we must still be careful. In 1 John chapter 3, verses 14 through 15, we know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth his brother abideth, uh, loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. So yeah, we can look at all of the murder that's going on, but Jesus, of course, upped the ante here. And, and he said that if we hate our brother, you know, we're a murderer. That's some pretty heavy duty stuff. Um, we've got to keep our hearts clean. Uh, because, you know, uh, God looks upon the heart. Uh, and and I, I, I know that uh, we've got to keep hatred 
I've got to keep hatred out of my heart. I've got to keep bitterness. I've got to keep anger and wrath and malice, putting aside these things. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Um, you know, these types of things. We really need to keep a, uh, our hearts right before God. Uh, there is a fourth sin that was mentioned here, and that's sorceries. The NIV puts it, puts it like this, magic arts. Um, I remember a little bit ago, I, I watched uh, some YouTube things on uh, documentaries on um, um, on the magic arts and all of these famous mus- ma- magicians like uh, I can't you know I, I know some of their names and stuff but y- you could google it and it's just crazy what they can do just I mean insane stuff that is absolutely demonically inspired and this documentary went into in the earlier origins of the of, of magic and, and especially like around you know 100 years ago they would make these um, signs of all these different magicians like Houdini even. They'd have all these little devils whispering into their ears. I mean, it was right there on the placards, right there on, the, on their uh, advertisements and their posters. You know, what, what, how they're doing these things is through demonic, you know. But now, it's like, oh no, it's just sleight of hand. It's just, but the, if you, you watch this stuff, it's not sleight of hand. It is absolutely demonic. It's, it's way beyond. How about levitating up? You know, there's a video of a guy levitating over top of the statue in Rio, that big uh, Christ statue, levitating right from the very bottom, ra- rising up like some hundred feet above it. Like, how? How? You know, obviously it's it's uh, it's sorceries. It's the it's the magic arts, and uh, you know, people are are uh, are you know really intrigued by this stuff, but it's truly demonic. Um, witnessing the flood of drug use today as well. If you look at the word pharmakia, it's the root for our English word pharmacy. There is a direct reference to drugs here. So that's what sorcery is in the original. It's pharmakia. Uh, if, you, if you witness the flood of drug use today, lives and families are being ruined by addictions that the Bible says would pre- uh, be prevalent at the end of the age. The use of mind-altering drugs that compromise one's morality um, is, is uh, definitely out there. There's all sorts of different drugs and concoctions, and whether it's natural or, or man-made things, uh, whether it's something you drink or smork, smoke or snort or inhale or, or inject. I mean, it's all out there. Matthew chapter 24 Uh, verses 48 through 49, it says, But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and to drink with the drunken. Now, do you think that's just talking about having a meal with a sinner? No, it's engaging in eating and drinking, consuming. I believe that it's consuming, um, you know, uh, uh, intoxicating substances you know uh, eating and drinking with the drunken the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him and an hour when he is not aware of and he shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth Um, Vine's dictionary says that uh, of pharmacia it primarily signified the use of medicine, drugs, in spells, in sorcery, in the use of drugs was generally accompanied by incantations and appeals to the occult powers. So it's always been like that from antiquity. People who, you know, drug use was a gateway into the spiritual realm. Um, now I know this firsthand before I was in church. Um, definitely I could tell you some stories that, that was just, I mean, definitely, it's very real uh, that it can put you into that place. And, you know, um, there's definitely a connection between the spirit world through the use of drugs. Uh, So we have to be careful. Um, Maybe we could have a quick discussion on drugs. Now, are all drugs bad? No. <laughs> what what's the difference between you referring to prescription or like prescription, yeah. Prescription. Yeah. prescription yeah. Or, yeah. It's natural, it's in moderation. What what do you think is the marijuana is natural? Right. I know. So, so is mushrooms and there's different. Is it, it is all made so people can take it. 
Like, yes. so are, we, are we talking about like yes. heart medication? Or are we talking about like crack? Well, well, that, that's what we want to discuss. Like just a, there's a difference between that exactly. like, because certain medications you get from a pharmacy could could keep somebody's blood pressure down, but then if you were to go smoke crack, then it's a different it's scenario. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. yeah. That's natural. <laughs> so, so that's what. That's what I wanted to bring out in this discussion is to clarify. We're not just saying that all drugs are bad, um, but the ones that, for me, the way I see it is, is that the ones that alter your, um, your, your state of, your mental state so that you compromise your morality. I mean, that, that, that's really where we see, you know, these things happening. get taken for the wrong reasons or you know you may start out taking them safely because you have back surgery and then you tip over into addiction so I think as Christians we have to be very careful of what we take even sure. for a legitimate purpose if it has an addictive potential to it right and it could cross over into putting ourselves um, susceptible to become have something something having the master over us but also get another way to look at it, right? Because you could have like oxycotton, which you know was being over prescribed like crazy, was the beginning of that of the of the fentanyl epidemic, basically, right? I just um, remembered a story from a preacher. So this was before he got the Holy Ghost or anything like that. Um, he was in his room using uh, narcotics and. Um, he was in this trance, he was just out of his mind completely, and he, he said that there was something, this being that started coming towards him and wanted to like come into him because of the amount of drugs he did and what he did, it opened him up. And he was able to tell that it opened him up in the, in the spiritual realm. And um, this thing wanted to come into him, and he was able to just pray in an instance and say, God, help me. And that day forward, he never used drugs again, but there is a component where when people are using certain hallucinogenics and stuff like that, it can open them up to things in the spirit. Yeah. 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 I've heard of this drug called DMT. You ever heard of that one? It's basically, you just you just check out for like 15 minutes. And you are literally put into another realm. And and I mean, it is just, it's a completely different realm where, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so... High and it's probably the most intense high anybody will ever have in their life. Yeah, and, 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 and most people like like they they leave that session believing in in, in in another realms. Because that's how real it is, you know, and it's so intense. Um, so it, it opens up. Yeah. Yeah. Just um, to touch on horoscopes and things in our society that people think is Yeah innocuous go and get a psychic reading or go and I mean how many people I know people that do that or go and um, get your tarot cards read or something like that right they think oh it's just ha ha or playing with the Ouija board or you know things like that right like even something this horoscope right it is specifically witchcraft it's witchcraft it's witchcraft yeah. and these things open you up to the spirit yeah. like different spirits yeah. you know, one, one thing that mediums do they will um, get somebody to come see them ask them to come back in a week and in that week there there is a spirit that goes and follows that person and, and learns the information comes back and reiterates it to you <coughs> because they actually have direct access with demons yeah and these people read your tarot cards psychic readings everything like that and it's, it's, it's all demonic yeah. but each one of those aquarius and all the different signs i think they're a god of some sort too you okay. look them up each one so I put that stuff behind. Like my mom was quite a bit, of course, a lot of people are, right? So it sort of come over into me, but then after what, when I come to God and whatnot, and as you learn, it's like, mm, that's wrong. Yeah, so there's, the, there's just so much in our society that's just accepted and, and, and whatnot. Or you can think it's going to happen, right? Look at your horse. Yeah. 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 Um, so the fifth one was mentioned beyond uh, uh, after uh, sorceries is fornications. The NIV, verse, the NIV version uh, uses just the simple term sexual immorality. So fornications is a very broad uh, term that describes any sexual immorality. The Greek word used here covers the broad realm of sexual immorality. 
both adultery and fornication, heterosexuality and homosexuality, incest, and all other forms of sexual perversion is all falls under this, this banner of fornications. And I mean, you don't have to go very far, but fornications are everywhere. This world is steeped in fornications. There's, it's just, uh, it's just everywhere, you know. Um, our culture is saturated in sexual immorality. Have you ever heard the term sex sells? Yeah, advertisers have found that out to be true. That's why um, even, even Walt Disney, I mean, it's, it's in there. It's, it's just everywhere. The world is certainly buying uh, this, this whole thing. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 15 through 16, looking diligently lest any man fall of the grace of God, lest there be any bitterness springing up trouble you, and, lest, and, and thereby many be defiled, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. That's such a, such a powerful parallel that, um, that the writer of Hebrews drew here about Esau. Now remember the story of Esau. He came in from the field. He was really hungry. And his brother was making some just excellent soup. And he just wanted it so bad. And uh, of course, Jacob, he was a bit of a, uh, a, a shyster, you could say. And he schmoozed him out of his birthright. And, and he said, hey, you know, you give me your, your birthright and, and, and I'll give you this bowl of, of bean soup. It was lentil soup is what he was brewing. And, uh, and he said, yeah, what good is, 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 is this? Is my birthright going to do? I'm, I'm about to die. And, and of course, he wasn't about to die. He was just hungry. You know, you can go for many, many days without food and still survive. So anyway, he sold his birthright just for a bowl of bean soup. And that's what this writer of Hebrews is making the parallel about a person who engaged in sexual immorality. They will, they're willing to just sell everything just for that one momentary gratification of whatever it is. Um, and it's just everywhere in our, in our culture. Um, Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4, Marriage is honorable and in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. The NIV version of this passage says, God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. The Amplified Version says that God will judge and punish the unchaste, all guilty of sexual vice and, adulter and adulterous. So, um, you know, people think they might be getting away f with their fornications and whatnot, just w along with all their other sins, because God is not striking them with lightning and whatnot. Um, maybe we could d discuss here, what are some just ramifications of, of living a sexually immoral lifestyle like what, what what are some real world consequences we're not talking about the judgment of god necessarily lightning coming down from heaven but what but what are some problems that ha arises it's a very good one yeah. unborn pregnancy stds yeah it destroys your family the family it destroys your family yeah absolutely adultery. yeah adultery is, is it's, uh, it's terrible yeah yeah. You become addicted to pornography, addiction. Yeah, it's huge in our society. You know. There's no real commitment, right? You don't get married, right? Like. Yeah. 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 And, Why and don't of course. Step up? <laughs> you know, it doesn't lift you up. Sin always brings you down, yeah, and all. Right. Yeah. That's what I wanted to just kind of stress about this whole thing. Like it's, you know, people are, you know, they feel guilty about it. Mm -hmm. and, and they have to go and do other things to try and wash away the guilt of their yeah. sin. Which, so they escape into drugs and alcohol, mm -hmm. which is another sin, and they just add sin to sin. And, yeah. You know, it's just a, it's a, like a spider's web. Yeah. Prostitution. Yeah. yeah. Um, First Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 18, it simply says, flee fornication. You know, if a person is tempted, just flee. <laughs> just run. You know, it's the best thing to do. Don't, don't even think about it. Don't, you know. Another thing to do is to refocus, you know. If you're being tempted in a certain thing, refocus on something else because we're human beings. We're going to have to focus on something. So if you can just mentally push that aside and focus on something else, 
you know, till that till that temptation passes. That's a powerful uh, way of overcoming any temptation, really. Um, so the next one that was mentioned here, number six, is thefts. So this specific uh, instance of the character trait uh, is the character trait of dishonesty. In the last days, we are increasingly unable to trust the truthfulness of other people's words or actions. Uh, contracts are routinely violated and swindlers will abound. Um, you know, I think anybody that's been in business for, for any length of time, they, they know that you know, they, they run into people who are, are actually trying to rip them off. Um, I remember, yeah. Pay you in cash, so right. they don't have to pay taxes. Yeah, and, and I, I think you can pay you in taxes if you ever, in cash if you want, but I just gonna take the GST off of there. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't give me anything. Yeah, I was just uh, I was with the brother, and he was telling me about he he had a business, and and he went in and did this really high end installation, and the guy wanted to pay him in cash, and said, yeah, you can pay me in cash. Doesn't matter. He was just starting his business. And then he came back, uh, you know, after the job was done to, to get the, the rest, rest of the payment. And it was quite a substantial amount that was owed. And the guy said, well, um, I'm not going to pay you. And then, and then um, my brother Harry said, uh, well, why? It's, are you not happy with the job? He says, no, no, I'm totally happy with the job. But um, because I paid you in cash, right? you know, we made a cash deal, you're not going to report me because you haven't paid your tax on it. And, You'll be in the same boat as me, so I'm not paying you. And 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 he actually said, "Well, actually, I did pay tax on this, and and I will press charges, and I will do this." <laughs> so anyway, he ended up getting paid. <laughs> so he called his bluff, is what he did, and and he did actually pay taxes on it. So yeah, yeah. But I mean, that's just uh, a typical, you know. But thefts occur on so many different levels. Um, you know, a person thieving their boss in, in, in time, uh, you know, uh, all kinds of different ways to steal, in taxes, cheating. I think that you should absolutely not pay any more than what you have to in tax. <laughs> you know, the, the government is fool, spends so foolishly and, and on such garbage stuff, um, but, uh, but we still have to pay our taxes. And, but anyway, so in our, uh, in our day, it's, it's, uh, this thievery has become famous by CEOs of major corporations having been indicted for fraud. National accounting firms have been found to engage in deceitful practices, um, and, and it's just everywhere. People are, are, are thieving. Thieves are, are, are abounding. Um, and the last one here, uh, it's actually in, incorporated in, in all of these sins, and that is the sin of the failure to repent. Because we read in verse 20 and verse 21 that they repented not of these things, of their fornications and of all of these things. Failure to repent. The seventh deadly sin of the end times is essentially mocks the grace of God. Uh, despite God's offer for mercy and forgiveness, many last days sinners will not uh, will still not repent. Um, Non-repentance occurs through hardness of the heart. We've got to remember that when a person fails to repent, uh, it's through the hardness of their heart, which um, can also be saturated, of course, and uh, unbelief floods in there, which causes people to stop repenting. But it really begins with a hardening, a hardening of the heart. Um, Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 through 14, Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you of an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest there be in any of you, uh, it, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of riches or of sin. Um, for we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. So, to be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Um, you know, like the term that the King James Version, they, they waxed worse and worse. That, that, that's such a vivid term, right? I don't know if I, I've always just assumed that that's talking about like, you know, when you put your 
finger in wax, it burns and it hurts the first time you do it. And the second time, it's not so much. And then pretty soon you've got so many layers that you just are to become desensitized and that's what can happen to our heart. We, uh, if we sin, God convicts us and then we don't take heed and repent. We can become hardened and, uh, you know, very dangerous. And, and here the writer of Hebrews is, is warning uh, people of God in departing from the living God through the hardening of the heart and sin. Matthew chapter 24, verses 12 through 13. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. There's another example of that waxing. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So it's a matter of either we're going to succumb to the pressures of this age, to these sins, and become hardened, and we will wax uh, cold, or we're going to endure unto the end. That's really the choice that we have. Now, um, I'm determined that I'm going to endure until the end. I, I have not lived for God for whatever it is, 33 years, just to go to hell. You know, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm in it to win it. I'm not, I'm not in this to just play. Uh, I must be saved. It's not like a negotiable thing. Um, so let us never fail to repent. We'll close with this passage here, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9-11. through 11. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor the effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. But then we see the injection of repentance. Because verse 11 says, And some, such were some of you, but you are washed, you are sanctified, you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So the only difference between people that do not make heaven and people that do make heaven uh, is this aspect of repentance. Repentance is, uh, is the first step that people take towards God. Uh, it's the first active step that people take towards God. And, and, uh, and it's something that I believe is incorporated with the everlasting gospel. Have you ever read about that in the book of Revelation? It talks about the angel preaching the everlasting gospel. I think that that's repentance. Because that's the one thing that God has always commanded throughout all of history. Old Testament and New Testament. That's been the common denominator. He's not always commanded people to be baptized uh, to, to be filled with the Holy Ghost and these things, but he's always commanded people to repent. Um, so repentance is something that we must never, uh, that we must cherish. It's a, it's a gift, isn't it? I mean, it's something that we need to hold very near and dear to us and, uh, and not, not to abuse. You know, one scripture says that, that, that it's, it's possible to crucify to ourselves the Lord of glory afresh and put him to an open shame. How, how is that possible? What, 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 how could a person re-crucify Jesus? I'm asking the question. Backsliding. So backsliding? Yeah. Yeah. How about chronic repenting over the same thing and not right. turning from it? Yeah. That could be borderline, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, I, I know that there are besetting sins, but you know, one time, one scripture says that at one time men, God winked at men's ignorance, but now he commands all men everywhere to repent. So he, you know, it's a serious thing. Um, and so much so that, uh, that the wrath of God uh, was poured out um, on all of the people in the end time that uh, do not repent of all of these sins. Is there any more uh, comments or Questions or things that you'd like to add, brother? Have you noticed in your lifetime, and I know I have, and I know that things have gotten, the, the hardening of the hearts are not only it's taught in the school, it's taught the young people are accepting things we would never accept. As a matter of fact, we wouldn't accept it just because, even when we're not religious. When I was younger, we, there's certain things I didn't do, and I wasn't a Christian. It's just, yeah. It's just, didn't do them. Yeah. Like take drugs ones in college and stuff like that. Like, you know, like I just, and, but nowadays it's so accepted, like, like abortion is a nothing thing. Uh, and it's murder. 
but they've they desensitized society and the governments that we have, especially the one in Canada. I mean, they brought in all these laws and you know, smoking pot is, is legal and you know. So they, they, they desensitize the generations after us. Yeah. And that's why the voice is, you can find faith in the earth when it comes back because the world has gotten really bad. I've noticed that in my lifetime, I don't know if you have. Absolutely, yeah, no, it's, it's uh, society's changed, it's changing like crazily. You know, think about, even think about like, I don't even know if I go back, maybe like six, seven, eight years ago, like this whole transgenderism thing, like, that would have been just unheard of. There's no way anybody would have accepted it. Just that short period of time, and now look at it, you know? It's just crazy. Well, look at the politicians today. What a farce. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we do know that Jesus is coming. Because this is just examples of the travails that's coming upon this world. Uh, and, and, uh, and uh, it's, it's a, you know, we, we, we can be cautioned by this type of thing, but we can also become excited by it because we know that Jesus is coming soon. Yeah. Praise God. Anybody else? All right, why don't we just pray in dismissal, Lord. We thank you for your presence here. We pray that you would help us keep your people, Lord. Keep your people, Lord. We pray that you keep us from the evil one, Lord, from, from wickedness, from un, uh, not repenting. God, help us, Lord, to always be close to the cross and take that cross up every day and follow you, Jesus, with all of our heart, Lord, and not become lazy or slothful, Lord, or neglectful, God. We pray that you help us to be diligent. You are a reward of them that would diligently seek you. God, we, we thank you, Lord, and help us to truly worship you and you alone, God. We thank you for it. We praise you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen.